Welcome back. Uh, for the next exercise or tutorial, we are going to be exploring uh, shiny buttons. We're going to make these shiny buttons with the pen tool and the shape layers tool. Um, basically, it's an extension of the, uh, the first exercise there, the pen tool basics. Um, so what we're going to be doing is, again, we want to make sure our pen tool is selected, and we want to make sure this guy right here is also selected. And that's the shape layers. We don't want the paths. We want the shape layers because those guys can contain color. And color is important when you're making buttons. Uh, so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to select a circle. I'm going to do a circle, for example. I can also go down over here if I want to get a circle and click and drag out. And I can find all of the different shapes, the same shapes that are found up here. So i got my circle going on. I'm going to hit the number one button to, to get my stuff out. Um, and you'll notice again, I want to point out that this little guy up here, this keyboard viewer, whatever keys I press uh, is showed on this keyboard viewer. Uh, use it for reference because I'm going to be using keyboard commands to, to quickly go through each tool. So if you ever get stuck and wonder why is the hand changing or why is the direct selection ch hand changing to the eyedropper tool, it's because I'm using these modifier keys, spacebar, uh, the command key, the option key, and the control key, and also sometimes the shift key. So all those, these three keys right here, um, they all kind of uh, modify everything. And if you play guitar, it's almost like making the C chord, but not really. Um, I have trouble making the C chord myself, but that's uh, another story. Anyway, let's make this circle and stop talking. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to get our path tool selected and I'm just going to go ahead and hold down the shift key because I want a, a perfect circle. If I let go of the shift key, it basically makes an ellipse or an oval. So I'm going to hold down the shift key, make a really nice circle here. And you'll see over in the layers uh, panel over here, this shape layer appears just like before in the pen tool exercise. Well, what we're going to call this right now, I'm going to double click on it and I'm going to call that master because because we're going to be making lots of duplicates of this and I don't want anyone to get confused okay so now also notice that um, it's just white I can double click on this and I can get any color I want and for the sake of this exercise I'm gonna make this a nice cherry red color okay so there's my master so what I'm gonna do now is I want to make a duplicate of this so I'm gonna go command J makes a duplicate I can also uh, if I want, click down over here, and there's duplicate layer. I can delete the layer. These are all the layer options. Um, notice how there is no shortcut um, posted here for, for this duplicate layer. It is Command-J, if you really want to know. So I made a duplicate layer. What I'm going to do is click on it. And now, back to, um, I'm going to get my click pen to get my pen tool selected. And I want to select this actual vector shape. So I'm going to hold down my Command key. And I am going to click. Uh -huh. Sometimes if you click in the wrong spot, you're going to get that. Could not select a layer because the point you clicked on is not inside a vector mask or of a visible layer. It's okay. Make sure it's selected and keep on clicking. And you actually have to click you know, right on that edge. If you click anywhere else, you're going to get that message. It's okay. Just keep on clicking. Uh, with the command key down. So now I got this beautiful selection here. I got my circle, I got my duplicate copy. What I want to do is I'm going to I want to make um, this into like a, a crescent shape. And um, one rule of thumb actually is that when you're making buttons that are reflected that are you know have you know um, uh, some type of reflection or shading or tone you're, you're trying to imitate the real thing. You're trying to imitate real life. So for example if I don't know what a shiny button looks like Google it open up Firefox and by the way this is going to take a second of course I should have this open in the beginning if you ever need batteries good place to go um, and I'm gonna Google shiny toy guns nope shiny button tutorial look at that it's everywhere we're making one right now I'm gonna just do shiny buttons well look at that there you go shiny buttons right there so if I click on this for example there's an example if you don't know how to make a shiny button or if you don't know what what it looks like what uh, how, how the light plays on it there's a wonderful example you gotta do it yourself mind you you can't steal other people's work um, but use it for reference material you can do a search example for 
um, ball bearings which are shiny and if I typed better we would actually have cool pictures well there's some pictures right there so if I was to do a Google search for images and where's a good one here there we go there you go there's a nice um, idea of uh, a reference material for to model your actual shiny button if you wanted it that reflective so if you don't know what it looks like do some research find out anyway I'm gonna get rid of that for a second back to the tutorial so now we got this thing set up I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna hit my I'm gonna hit my command key here and I'm gonna select the top the top um, point the top anchor point and I'm just gonna select it and you'll know it's selected because uh, it'll it'll be filled with solid color. Um, so you can see it's solid there. This guy over here, it's like a little white box. So this is unselected. When it's selected, you got the black box inside of it. So with that selected, I'm going to hold my shift key down just because to snap it to to a vertical axis. I'm going to drag it down, and I'm going to drag it down just below the horizon line. And the horizon line, of course, is this area right across here because this is basically your your your, your shadow reflection. So I'm going to go ahead and drag it down. That's pretty good. Now, right now, it's kind of, it may resemble the Pepsi logo. You could make the Pepsi logo, but that would be copyright infringement. Don't want to do that. So we got this thing set up. What I want to do is, I'm, this is a shadow right here, so I want to make this a little bit darker. Well, how do I do that? I just go over to my thumbnail preview, which is this guy, the colored chunk of this layer, and I click on it, double click. And then I'm going to just make this just a teeny bit darker. There you go. That's fine. Then go back up to the top. Now you can see the difference between the two. And this would become my shadow layer. But I want to have these guys sharp, sharp ends. So again, what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold down the Option key. I'm going to select this the, the line segment itself. I want to get these guys right up here, which is the direction point. And you'll notice if I mouse over this guy, this direction point, it doesn't do anything. If I hold down the option key right there it turns into this beautiful little guy which is a convert selection point with this convert selection point I can click on it and I can pull and drag this curve anywhere I want and I mean I can make all different kinds of reflections with this for this example I'm just basically pulling this down and just pulling it right over top just like so because I want to have a nice clean line right across the top so then I'm going to go over and I'm going to hit my direct selection tool, select this chunk of the line segment, and then I'm going to go over and get my convert uh, selection tool and mouse over top of that direction point and pull that one down, right down like so. Beautiful. So now this is what I have. And if you actually want to hide these lines, uh, you can actually go Option H, I'm sorry, Command H, hide it, Command H again, reveal it again. So now that we got that done, what we want to do is we want to add a, add a layer mask to this to, to add some tone. And layer masks are basically just, think of it as um, as a, a layer mask. It it masks off and hides the, the current layer it's applied to to reveal stuff underneath. Um, so anyway, the, the layer mask itself is right down here. So if I click on layer mask, bonk, it pops up right there. And I'll actually I'll undo that. If I go down to layer mask, just so you can see, keep your eyes up here. Actually, I'm just going to pull this right up so it's apparent. I'm click it up, pow. This is the layer mask, that white guy right in the middle. Notice they've got the little chains on them. The chains indicate that this layer is all linked together. Everything moves uh, as a group sort of thing. So this is selected. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, well, I don't have to make a selection. I can actually go in here and I'm going to go to my gradient tool. Gradient tool, why? Because I'm going to put a nice gradient mask across this. And the layer masking itself, it works only in black and white. So if I was to, for example, get my paintbrush, and I can paint away stuff, I can do whatever. If I get my paintbrush, um, and I'm just going to get opacity of 100% uh, to make sure it's solid and thick. It only works in black and white. Black, if I paint on here, black hides the top layer, and you'll see it pops up in there, that little representation of what's happening down here. If I go down here and switch them to tab white, white takes away the layer mask and reveals your your actual layer itself. So so black I'm just gonna swatch the switch this again. Again, black erases and white adds it back. 
And the nice thing about this stuff is it's non-destructive. You're not physically 